thank you for your son Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity in this country to worship you openly and freely. We thank you that your spirit is in your house, this house, this morning, and all Bible-believing and gospel-preaching churches all over the world. That you fill their church, their, your house, Lord, with your spirit. And may, they, may you bless them this morning, bless us this morning with your presence. Bless the message and the music in Jesus' name. Amen.
Pastor asked me to read the scripture verse this morning, so he picked up me this week. Uh, we are in the book of Matthew this morning, chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. And if you were here a few weeks ago when Pastor allowed me to give a message, uh, I talked a little bit about the Ten Commandments of the worship service. And one of the commandments was, Thou shalt read only the scripture of the King James Version, because that's the only true Bible. Well, this morning again, I'm going to sin because I'm going to read on NIV. <laughs> so, if you have your Bible to open, we will begin. And this is the healing of the boy with the demon. Oh, okay. I'll wait. Oh, I got it. You got it? When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And Jesus replied, O unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon that came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in, in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. 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 Bear with that, yep, right there, right there, right there, so right here. Get a little quick with this. I'm going to reset it next time. Okay, now we'll see if this works. Thank you. 
job. What's up with our sound system here, Slick? I <laughs> think the squirrel got in here and chewed the wires. Uh oh. I heard about that squirrel in church. He is a squirrel. Oh, uh huh. We'll put that on your to do list. <laughs> <laughs> Most of yours is getting longer and longer. <laughs> <laughs> is it like the Mississippi squirrel? Yeah, it's more. <laughs> The wires are brand new. I, I just see. put them off there. I want to see. Yeah, I got there. it now. I think we got to give um, Jason and Chris and Herb uh, applause for digging in the weeds. I think Ron helped in the bark and the rice has got it. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I think they did a good job. Anybody I missed? Oh, Saying you're lost in the weeds again, huh? Yeah. I've been smoking. <laughs> Can I have some? No. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our prayer list this morning, yeah, before we get too far out of control, any more than we already are. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Judy has uh, bronchitis and pneumonia, or Yes, they did find in the x-ray some more tumors. Yes, in her lungs, when she had a, went back to the hospital, uh, so they found, I don't know if they're going to biopsy those or just what she hasn't said yet, but uh, and then she has, they didn't do that, they were going to do that, but they didn't do that because of the bronchial. <coughs> so that's where she is at, we need to keep her in our prayers. Roger is... Still on the mend? I guess he's going to Florida, or? He's thinking, yeah, they're planning on it. But okay. Mom said he gave away. He had to give no away. She misunderstood on that. So he's still about 140, and he started out about 240. Yeah. So wow. he's, uh, his, his prayer, he said he wants prayer that he gains weight. Okay. They put him on a new, he's allergic to the chemo, they put him on something else. Yeah. So he's hoping that works. It works. Okay. Rogers and her bird, David Rose, uh, still on her bird list because we have no idea. He's okay. just starting chemo again. Again, because yeah. we found him. And uh, so then, Scarlett, any update on her? No. Uh, she's not keeping anything down. And yeah, I've seen that. The tube came out twice, so they go on and listen to the stomach. And it's going to be a rough little battle. Okay. And then she has cancer, by the way. So. Anybody else have anybody they want to put on the prayer list that we should pray for? Oh, can we put my dad on there? He's got to have a heart operation here. His name is Ken Elliott, and he has to have a heart operation. Okay. Well, they keep postponing it, and now they probably need to him as well, and they're not sure what that is. Okay, so Ken Elliott. Anybody else? Okay, let's ask the Lord's blessing or intervention in these people's lives. Father, we thank you that we can come to you, that you are the great healer, the comforter. And Lord, these people that we have mentioned need your help, need your healing or uh, needs in their lives that have to be met that we have no idea. We have no idea. But we bring them before you in faith, before the altar of the Almighty God. We lay them at your feet and pray, Lord, that you meet each and every need as it arises in their lives for their specific needs. We thank you that we can do this. And we praise you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'd like people to keep in their prayers um, our, our people who are leaving. Oh, yes. We'll be out next week. So we need to keep prayers for everybody get safety back to the yep. home. Yeah, Mars leaving. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> Goldie's leaving, so we need to keep them in our purse for safe journey. Of course, we got those who don't come to church. We need to keep them in our purse. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I know they're all headed out, so. so all right. <laughs> <coughs>
Brian read our scripture reading this morning and it was about a young boy who was possessed by a demon. And like he said, he, he uh, had seizures, he'd fall into the water and fall into the fire. And the man took the boy to the disciples for healing. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. And they were perplexed, to say the least, that they didn't have the power to cast out this demon. So the man takes the boy to Jesus, and Jesus casts out the demons. And later on, the disciples went to Jesus, and they asked him, why were we not able to cast this demon out? And Jesus said, in very simple terms, you have a lack of faith. Not that they didn't have faith, but they had a lack of it. <clears throat> and we are in this, we're in the same boat. We have lapses of faith. And what causes those lapses? Could be circumstances. Sometimes, <clears throat> when you look at a problem and it is so overwhelming that you think there is no solution, that takes away from your faith. Because you have doubt. And doubt takes away from your faith. So there's a lot of things that can shrink your faith, give you lack of faith. And this is what happened here. The disciples didn't, it wasn't that they didn't have, they just had a lack of it. And who knows for what reason. Faith in Webster's Dictionary is defined as unquestionable belief, complete trust, and total confidence. That's faith in the Webster's Dictionary. But the Bible tells us in Romans 11, 1, it, it defines faith. <clears throat> it says, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You can't get any clearer than that. That's faith. <clears throat> and many things, faith will accomplish many, many things in our lives, but we have to use it. We have to apply it to our life. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I wrote this down this morning because the Lord gave it to me, so I'm going to share it with you. <clears throat> it takes faith to have faith. You follow me? It takes faith to have faith. If you have no faith in your faith, then like Jesus said, you have a what? Lack of faith. Do you follow any of that? <laughs> <laughs> But it's very profound. It's very profound. It takes faith, if you think about it, it takes faith to have faith. And it's true. If you don't have faith that your faith can get you through an instance or a circumstance or a problem, then you won't have the quality of faith that you need to survive. <clears throat> Life is tough. Why make it any harder? Why make it any harder than it is? It's already hard. <clears throat> Seven things that faith can do. We're going to go through them real quick today. Not, this is not all of the things that faith can do, but we're going to go just through ones that <clears throat> I picked up. Faith can help save you. Faith can help save you. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace we are saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. Wow. Faith cannot save you. Got that? I don't care what church you go to, what college you went to, what <coughs> country you come from. Faith isn't going to save you. Grace, grace will save you, okay? Faith is the funnel in which we get grace. It's like, for instance, you have a, a long neck bottle, and over here you have a pitcher. And then this bottle is going to represent you, and this pitcher full of grace. Now you need to get this pitcher into this bottle. How do you do it? 
You use a funnel. Mm -hmm. You use a funnel. It makes it a lot easier. Well, that's what faith is in our lives. It is the funnel by which we receive grace. Grace that can save us. It says in Ephesians 6.16, <clears throat> taking up the shield of faith, which is the Word of God, wherein we shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. <clears throat> faith can do that. <clears throat> I actually read ahead to the next topic, faith can and will defend you. Faith can and will defend you. And the scripture I just read refers to that. We need a shield. Faith is that shield. The word of God is that shield. The armor, in the, back in the Roman day, back in Jesus' day, the Roman soldiers all uh, had protection. That's what kept them alive in battle. And that would be a good soldier. But they had, the Bible says, the, the armor of God. Well, they had a, they had a, the helmet, they had the breastplate, and the most important part of their defense was the shield that they carried. <laughs> and faith to Christians is like a shield to that Roman soldier. The Word of God to us is like the shield to that Roman soldier. It will protect, it will defend us. In our times of need. <clears throat> the same can be said in our faith, in our lives, <clears throat> that without the Word of God, without the faith, <clears throat> Roman soldiers in battle, if they didn't have the shields and the protection that wouldn't last very long. Their life expectancy would be very short. Well, your life as a Christian without faith is very short. Okay? You, once saved, always saved. But you can live a very rough life if you don't have trust and faith and an almighty God who can deliver us from any circumstances. It can get very hard. And you will feel defeated. It says in 1 Peter 5 8, Stay alert. Watch out. For your great enemy, the devil, for he prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, <clears throat> Satan isn't going to attack people that he already has. But he will attack working Christians, people who are working on their faith, people who are serving God. That's who he wants. That's who he's going to come after. <clears throat> Remember, we're talking about being defended. The Word of God will defend us. It says, <clears throat> this includes... You and I, if you're a Christian today, he's coming after you. He's coming after you. No doubt about it. And the problem is we don't know when, we don't know where, and we don't know how. But we know one thing for certain, that he will, he will be there. And we can rely on our faith to be that shield like the Roman soldiers. We can, faith will constantly defend us if we, what? Use it. If we use it. Like the old saying is, if you don't use it, you what? You lose it. Same thing with faith. Same thing with faith. There's an old expression, I think it was a uh, credit card, Mary American Express or something like that, that said, don't leave home without it. Don't leave home without your faith. Faith will help provide for you. Faith will help provide for you. Psalms 9.10 And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hath not forsaken 
them that seek thee. He has not forsaken the people who honestly and truly seek God. In Psalm 35 or 37, 25, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I seen the righteous, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed, his seed, begging bread. He provides for us. Hebrews 13.5 Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He will provide. Another scripture reading, Acts 2.21 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He provides a way for sinners to become sinners. He provides. <clears throat> says, I like this one. Consider the lilies of the valley and how they grow. They toil not, neither they, do they spin. And yet, I say unto you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And therefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Shall he not take care of us? Yes, he will. God will provide for us. Faith will cement you. Faith will cement you. Number four. Second Chronicles 2020. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Cemented, in other words. Grounded, in other words. <clears throat> the setting is over. Is Israel is going into battle. <clears throat> and Jehoshaphat is standing before the people of Israel. And he gives them this one line before they take off into battle. And he says, Trust the Lord, believe the prophets. And off they went. Trust the Lord and believe the prophets. You can't give... <clears throat> If you're a counselor, the first thing I would say to somebody coming in my office is, <coughs> trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. That is the best advice you can give or get. There's a lot more to it than that, if you're counseling. But, the, in essence, that is what each and every one of us need to do. Trust in the Lord. <clears throat> it is only by faith that God, and through God, we can obtain the foundations that we need as Christians. <clears throat> no other place. You can't get it in money. You can't get it in wealth. You can't get it in prosperity. You can't get it in fame and fortune. <clears throat> Only through God. If you try it in any other place, if you try to get... <coughs> it is like the song says, sinking sand. <laughs> I like the song. It goes, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on <coughs> Jesus' name. On Jesus Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Songwriter knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was talking about. You need faith in order to build a firm foundation to grow on. Faith is growing process. You start out as a babe, and eventually 
Hopefully, you'll grow into an adult in your faith. Number five. Faith will add punch to your prayer. I like that. <laughs> faith can add punch to your prayer. You know, and there's been a lot of people, uh, including yours truly, we have issues with praying. Uh, sometimes it's time. We don't have time to pray. Sometimes we don't know what to pray, how to pray. It says in John, 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything, anything, according to His will, He heareth us. <clears throat> Churches today, not, not all, but many of them have gotten away from teaching prayer, gotten away from <clears throat> teaching how to pray. Matter of fact, churches got away from a lot of things that God would have liked to have taught in their, his house. That being another sermon for another time. <clears throat> Moses, I, you read through the Bible and it's just so full of things that will teach you how to pray. For instance, Moses prayed and God parted the sea. God heard Moses. God heard Moses. Joseph prayed, and the sun stood still, and God answered his prayer. God answered his prayer. David prayed and dropped a nine-foot, nine-inch giant to his knees. Empowered by the power of David's prayer. Of David's prayer. <laughs> David had five stones he went to battle with. It only took one to drop Goliath. The other four were for his sons. For his sons. <clears throat> prayer is a powerful tool. Prayer is a powerful tool if we use it. <clears throat> I have tried to set up times that I want I like to pray. I don't always stick to those. So if you just sit down <clears throat> and think. When do I have a amount of time that I can dedicate to God? When do I have an amount of time that I can pray to God? And try, try that. It may work and it may not. You may have to change your times around. <clears throat> you may have to change your times around. But it, if you start to work on a habit, then it will help you set up a, a schedule for prayer. Prayer is a powerful tool. Number six, faith will heal your family. Faith will heal your family. <laughs> Proverbs 14.11. Proverbs 14.11. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the righteous shall, be, shall flourish. Shall flourish. The wicked are interested <coughs> in things. I, I preached the other, you know, three or four weeks ago uh, about... <coughs> when Zechariah was taken to Egypt because of the guards, the, the people that they had left behind and killed the governor, and so they were afraid, and they asked Zechariah to pray to God. And so they took him to Egypt. <clears throat> Why did they go there? Because there was no God that would demand them to be accountable for their actions. All of the gods that the Egypts, Egyptians served were all do as you want, get what you got, and there was no accountability. <clears throat> we, not we, Christian, or sinners, look for the temporary. Whatever they can get in this life is what they're after. Christians, on the other hand, should be looking for a home in glory. That's what our goal <coughs> should be. <coughs> should be. I've never seen. I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer with somebody's <laughs> possessions in it. You ain't gonna do it. You can't take them with you. <coughs> you 
came into this world naked, you're going to leave without anything too. You're going to leave without anything. <clears throat> Number seven. Faith will move mountains and kill giants. Faith will move mountains, kill giants. Matthew 17, 20. If he had faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove hence from yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible to you. To you. Faith can move mountains, and it will kill giants. It will kill giants. <clears throat> it doesn't take a lot of faith. Just mustard seed. And it'll grow. It'll grow. If you work. If you're working. <laughs> These are just seven things. Seven things that popped in my head and I wrote them down. There is so, so, so much. You could preach a lifetime on faith alone and what it does and how it works and the mysteries of it. But we only had an hour. Today is Communion Sunday. So why do we take communion? Anybody want to take a stab at it? We take communion. <laughs> Because it is in remembrance of things that Jesus did for us on the cross. Not just the cross. Everything leading up to the cross. His entire being is on earth. was all done for us. And so communion is in remembrance of what he did. I'm going to pass around these little cups. They have two layers. Some of you may have known this, some of you may not. <laughs> the top layer is the wafer, and the second one you pull off is the grape juice. And sometimes they're a little difficult to, if you need help. That's really good. Don't drink the juice before you get there. Okay, I won't. <laughs> It was either these things or real wine and real wafers, so I didn't know if you might have been. Huh? You could do the real wine. It's okay. Large glass? Yeah. Not the perfect one, just the clear one. Hope I got nothing. Next time we'll bring
Okay, you guys ready for gun? Mm-hmm. Tell me if I take her you did go in. We are. I'm standing the wafer this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, in the same manner, he took up the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the it is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Shall we partake? <laughs> Verse 26 says, As often as you eat the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim, this is what communion is, you proclaim the death until he comes. <laughs> Amen. Play our song, bud. Amen. 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 <laughs> 
Thank you.